We've talked about ionic compounds, but now we're going to move to covalent compounds. This is the nonmetals with nonmetals, and remember we share electrons with covalent bonding. It's very flexible uh, bonding, and so as a result, you have a huge number of possibilities. And there's no charge on the atoms to help us figure out the formula. So the way that we name compounds that are covalent compounds is that we just specify the number of atoms in each element using the Greek prefix system. The prefix system has uh, these prefixes, which you're probably familiar with most of these. Mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, hecta, octanona, deca. Now, what we do is we put the prefix, then the element in the front, then we put a prefix, and then the element that is in the back with ide on the end. So, um, Mono is only used if uh, it's on the second element. We don't ever use mono in the front part. So let's look at some examples. Only one sulfur, so we just say sulfur and then dioxide, sulfur trioxide. Nitrogen, here we have to use mono because there's only one. Nitrogen monoxide. Now right here, we've got two nitrogens, so we have to say dinitrogen monoxide. Students commonly will forget to put that di there. Nitrogen dioxide, diphosphorus pentoxide. So this is a really easy nomenclature system if you know the prefixes. So uh, realize that you're going to remember it. As a result, many students who don't study and try problems are going to uh, resort to this as a default in every nomenclature situation. Don't do that. Only use it when you have nonmetals in combination with nonmetals. Go ahead and write the formulas for these names. Well, chlorine, pentabromide, sulfur, tetrachloride, dinitrogen, pentoxide. How do you keep all this nomenclature straight? Well, there's I've created a decision tree to help you. For the front part of the compound, first thing you can say, is it a metal? If no, then you say, is it ammonia? Yes, you just say ammonium in the front. If no, then you're going to be using a non-metal with a non-metal prefix system. If it is a metal, then you have to ask yourself, does it vary in charge? Or is it always one charge regardless of the compound? Well, if it's always one charge, you just say the metal name. If it can vary, that's that blue area in the periodic table, then you say the metal name with the Roman numeral. So iron with the two positive is iron two. Uh, cobalt with the three positive is called iron, excuse me, cobalt three. The back half of the inorganic compound is negative. There's only two possibilities. Either it's going to be a nonmetal ide, where it's all one particular nonmetal, and we know the charge, or it's going to be a polyatomic ion, of which you need to know four of the negative ones. Just remember, when you do problems, though, you're probably going to have to have your book nearby so you can look these up. Go ahead and now using that nomenclature tree, try to name these compounds. Well, this compound is zinc. And because zinc, I mean this element here is zinc, and because zinc is one of those in that area of the periodic table that goes three, two, one in the center, uh, it has a positive two charge, always. And so what do we say is we just say zinc, and then we follow by the polyatomic ion name, acetate. This is copper. Copper here, uh, copper is one of those that can vary, so we're going to have to say copper 2 sulfate. Why is it 2? Because sulfate has a negative 2 charge, so copper must have a positive 2 charge. This is cesium, and that's sulfur. 
cesium is in the first column and so we don't ever put the charge sulfur sulfur has no other element with it like see here we have two elements together the sulfur has no other nonmetal with it so we just say cesium sulfide this is a nonmetal so we've got to use a prefix system sulfur dioxide that's an ionic compound what ionic compound is ammonium with hydroxide so we just say ammonium hydroxide and then here we have potassium with nitrite potassium is in the first column always positive one so we just say potassium and no charge write formulas for the following compounds Lead 2 is going to be Pb with the 2 plus. Carbonate is CO3 with the 2 minus. They match 1 to 1 because both are positive 2 and negative 2. Cadmium bicarbonate. Cadmium has a positive 2 charge, bicarbonate a negative 1 charge. So you have to have two bicarbonates. Notice I put a parenthesis around the bicarbonate and a subscript 2. Chlorine tribromide. This is a nonmetal with a nonmetal. It's easy. Ammonium phosphate. Ammonium is NH4 with a positive 1. Phosphate, PO4 with a negative 3. You have to have three ammoniums to balance the charge. Silver sulfide. Silver always has a positive 1 charge. Sulfide, a negative 2. So you have to have two silvers to the one sulfur.